In this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to do some easy trash to treasure projects and I'm even going to teach you how to stage some of your things. These are all items that I've gotten from the thrift store. They were quite inexpensive and you can turn them into a really nice piece and make a great profit. So if you're ready to dive into this week's projects, then let's go ahead and do them. Before we get started though, I just want to welcome you if you're new here to Flea Market Rescue. My name is Kelly Sherry. I do a lot of home decor makeovers and furniture flips. If you're interested in learning how to do some of this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. I found this face at the Goodwill and it just had this really glossy kind of look like it just came out of a kiln and it did not look expensive at all. As a matter of fact, it was not expensive. Now, I don't know if you guys remember when I took these little eyesores and turned them into really high-end vases or urns, whatever you want to call them. Well, we're going to do the same thing and I'm going to show you how. Guys, I picked up this face and it wasn't very much money. I think it was like literally, I don't know. Let's see if the price is still on there. Oh, $3.99. Now this is very glossy and it's not as impressive in person. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we are gonna paint it to look very impressive. Again, it's so shiny. Like it just has like a glaze, a gloss on it. And it's just not appealing that way. It looks very cheap. So we're gonna make it look expensive. We are gonna start with some of the Annie Sloan graphite. This is one of my favorite colors by Annie Sloan. I really like using it because it just gives it more of a really high end look. I've used it on end tables, buffets, and as you know, home decor. And that's what we're gonna use today, except we're gonna do a little bit of a layered effect on top of that. Just trying to mix that up a little. Oh yeah, we still need to mix it up just a little bit more. Today, however, it was not cooperating. I bought this one a while ago and have not used it, so I'm just gonna mix it up real quick. Okay, that should be good. Let's try this again. In hindsight, I probably should have wiped off my brush too, because as you can see, this is going on like a glaze rather than paint. But I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go with it because I'm gonna put a second coat on anyhow. Now that it was dry, it was time to put the second coat on. Let's just hope that the second coat goes on better than the first. Go ahead and put a second coat of this on here. Well, that's a little better, but it still has a little bit of that glazy kind of look. So I'm gonna do a little public service announcement. Stir your paint real good, people. Make it easy on yourself. All right, now that it's painted graphite and it does not look very good, by the way, we are going to use a little Annie Sloan here again, but this time we're gonna do it in French linen. So what you wanna do with your second paint, you want to go over the high spots with the paint. That way the dark paint that we painted underneath will shine through and it'll give it some dimension. Again, don't cover everything. You want that graphite to shine through. Now, if we take a look at this, it has great depth. It also has a flat, chalky kind of look to it, and it looks more high-end. It looks old and worldly, rather than something that came out of a kiln in 1974. After looking at the wonderful layered effect, I looked at the top part and I thought, you know what, we need to paint the inside. So that's what I did as well. Now, to protect the finish, you can either put a clear wax, a polyurethane, or even spray some clear coat on that. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these dried flowers. 
I had got them at a garage sale for 50 cents. I've had them forever. I still remember him and Han over him like, oh, should I buy these? And my mom's like, it's 50 cents. So we're just gonna kind of put those in there. Had to break this down there. That looks beautiful. So that was pretty easy peasy just to make something look a little more expensive. All right, you guys, when I was at the thrift store, I picked this up for $4.99. It's a reproduction, um, reproduction wood dough bowl. Now this is like an espresso finish, and if you shine it in the light, it almost looks like it's a cherry wood, which that's not what you want for a wood dough bowl. So we're gonna change that. We're gonna make it look fabulous, and I'm gonna show you what you can do with it a couple different ways. All right, we're just gonna take a price tag off here. And then I'm just gonna kind of clean that up real quick and wipe it up. All right, so we're gonna paint this a white chippy look. All right, so I have some white on my brush here. My paint is pretty thick, I've had it in a while, so we're just gonna, I, I watered it down a little bit. Now you don't wanna get everything, you're just gonna get the majority of it but not everything. So as you can see, that gives it a nice chippy kind of look. We're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna paint the back side. All right, so this is pretty much dry to the touch. I am gonna flip it over and we are gonna do the back part. So this could look fine just the way it is. You wouldn't even have to do anything. You could just leave it white. Um, you could stage it with a little moss. Let's go ahead and put some moss in there. And then maybe add some pears to it. I got these at the thrift store. They were very inexpensive. I'm officially my mom. My mom always gets fake fruit and fake vegetables. When I was out thrifting at Goodwill, I found this beautiful white porcelain pitcher. And then at Salvation Army, I found three sprigs of the lemons. And I just stuck them into the pitcher. And I think they add a lot of color and it's a nice display. Cherries. Oh, oh wow, those look realistic oh, too. These are great. Let's, oh, and it's a purple tag, so it's how much is that? Sweet. Look at those. They do look realistic. They look great. Three dollars. So I had a dollar fifty. Wow. Very yes. good. They're mine. <laughs> I think I have. I'm officially my mom now. So see how nice that looks. All in the staging. So right there. That could be fine, just the way it is. You could sell it, no problem. But I think we're gonna go one step further and I'm gonna show you how to make it look like wood grain. 
Before I do that though, I want to show you another option you can do with these wood dough bowls. Remember when I showed you how to make candles in a can? Well, you could do like a three wick candle in here. It would look beautiful. As a matter of fact, I have a girl in my Facebook group. She makes the most amazing candles in these wood dough bowls. You just have to see. Look at this. And she even uses my hang tags on them. I love them. She uses a different variety of bowls that she pours her candles into, and she has the most amazing scents available. So uh, what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description just in case you want to order one. Also, she's going to be opening a store just like me. I'm so excited for her. And she sells IOD products too. She sells the molds. She sells transfers. So I'll leave a link in the description. Her name's Carrie Schaefer. And again, she's just starting out, so I want to support her, and I hope that you will too. All right, let's get on to another version of what we can do with this bowl. We're going to take this white dough bowl, and we're going to turn it into like a wood grain one. So let's do that right now. I have a little of this Annie Sloan cocoa paint, and we're going to use a little bit of water. We're going to do like a wash on it. All right, so I'm going to just dip my brush into this Annie Sloan cocoa. And then what I'm going to do, I mean, you just want to just tap the, the top bristles and you're going to dip it a little bit into water, shake it off a little, and we're going to start streaking this back and forth. Now, do you see that it's very wet? So you're just going to keep doing that until the water dissipates. It's back and forth, back and forth. You can even add a little more water because as you can see right here, it's very solid. We don't want that. Again, just keep on going back and forth. That water will just kind of start to go away. I'm just gonna dip my brush one more time in there because we need a little more for the sides. We'll go all the way around. And we're just gonna keep doing that. Again, if it looks a little too solid, then just get some more water, but you need to keep moving so that you have a grain-like pattern. I'm just going to tap my brush just one more time just to get a few bolder lines. Again, if it looks a little too solid, break it up with some water. Dip your brush in some water. But I think this is looking really good. I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll do the bottom part. All right, this is dry. We still have to do another thing to it, but we're gonna flip this over and paint the back. So I'm just gonna repeat the same process as we did on the front. All right, that's looking pretty good. We're gonna let that dry. All right, so this is looking good, but not quite good enough. We are dipping our brush in Annie Sloan. We're just getting the tips of your brush and then you're going to streak it across back and forth, back and forth, just so we can make a little bit more of a green pattern. We're almost doing like a dry brush. You're going to want to like get off the excess paint. Now the last thing I'm doing is I have a little bit of white on the tips of my brush and I'm just going to kind of streak that across. It does have a little water too. I have a little water on there. 
in just a little bit of white paint on the tips. There you go, you guys. You have a wood grain pattern. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna repeat the process on the back, and then we're gonna stage it. When you're done with this bowl, you probably wanna put some kind of sealer on there, whether it's like a clear wax, a polyurethane, or even you could do a clear coat. But that will help protect it because if you get it wet, it will kind of, you know, do the same thing that we just did the whole process. So, all right, we're gonna go stage that now. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this moss because moss, you know, really gives that natural element to it. And then I really love using like these kind of balls. This is a really big one. We're gonna put that right in the middle. Then I have a few of these natural ones. I have another cement one. We'll put that right over here. And Another one like this. And if you want, you can even add a little of this in. I got this from Walmart. And I think this would be really good just to add a little bit in there. So we're gonna do that too. Now to get these, you know, you know how they have wire in them. You don't wanna ruin your scissors. So I have these. They're like needle nose, but they also cut wire. So you're just gonna wanna find a nice piece that you like and then just snip it right here. That simple. So I have a few more that I'm doing and then we're just gonna add that in. All right, so I'm just gonna start adding this in. You can put it like right off to the side Add a little more on top. Add a little in here too. You know, this here really looks high end and it's amazing what you could do. Do you remember the color of this bowl? So we've come a long way, and this is just another version of what you can do with a wood dough bowl. So I hope you enjoyed the different versions of what you could do with a dough bowl. I bought this really cool box here, but as you can see, the bottom drawer is just like broken. It was $12.99, but I think after it's fixed, it's just gonna be awesome and worth so much more money. So let's fix the drawer and then we're gonna do something really nice to this. I'm gonna use some of this epoxy. Um, I've always used epoxy, even on my crafts back in the day, and I love epoxy. So that's usually what I use to fix things. So I'm gonna just put a little bit out here. It's a two part. You squirt out two equal parts. And then you're just gonna mix that. I have like a stick. I'm just gonna mix this with a stick here. And then we're gonna put it all on the edge of the drawer. That way we're, we know that it's not gonna break again. Okay. 
Okay. I'm gonna put a little in the creases too. Just as an added kind of protection. All right, so now we're gonna flip that over onto there. Press that down. Make sure it's level. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So we're just gonna let this dry here and then we'll come back and we'll paint it. Like I said, it's gonna look awesome. I have our Annie Sloan graphite and we're just gonna paint that. I always leave the drawers in, even on my furniture pieces, because I only paint the fronts. I usually don't paint the inside drawers unless they're really bad. This is probably gonna require two coats. Oh yeah, it is. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda op pry open the drawers just a little. That way they don't get stuck. And actually we can just kinda paint just the tops of them. Okay, so this first coat is completely dry and it looks like a hot mess. I even have a drip there, but that's okay. We're gonna go on to the second coat and it's gonna look fabulous. So we're gonna add a second coat of this Annie Sloan graphite. Okay, that is going on how the Annie Sloan paint should go on. All right, so I have this painted. This is the second coat. We're probably gonna need a third coat. I'm gonna open up the drawers again just to kinda make sure that they don't stick. We're gonna let that dry, and like I said, we're probably gonna need a third coat, but that's okay. And after that dried, sure enough, I needed to put a third coat on, so I did that and let that dry. All right, now that this thing is completely dry and we have it done, as you can see above here, we can see that it has not been painted. So we're gonna take care of that real quick. Um, I'm gonna remove the drawers and we're just gonna paint that inside so it has a nice finished look. So here I am painting the inside and I am a sloppy painter, but you know what? At the end, I tighten everything up. All right, so while the inside here is drying, we're gonna work on the drawers just a little bit. As you can see, I'm a little bit of a messy painter and um, we need to sand this off because we want it to end right here. And I'm gonna bring the paint up to here and we're gonna sand this right here real quick. So if you ever get any paint like I did right here, you're just gonna take a little sandpaper and you're gonna sand that off because we just want the lip there painted. So I'm gonna do this on the opposite side as well that way your drawer is gonna look nice and tidy. Once you're done sanding the drawers, you're gonna do any touch-ups. Like I missed a little spot in the corner, so we're gonna have to paint that. But right now I'm just trying to get any extra paint off the sides. Okay, and then as you can see, we need a little paint here and a little paint here. In the last Trash to Treasure video, you guys were making me laugh. I was reading the comments and it, you guys were losing your mind over my brushes. Yes, they were pretty bad. So you'll be happy to know that I did get a few new brushes. So we're gonna use them today. So I'm just gonna touch that up. Again, we're just doing like the lip of it. Sorry for the lighting. I got this bright light on the side of me here so that you could see, but 
it's kind of giving shadows too. All right, so that's basically what we're doing. We're just gonna kind of finish it off on this. I'm gonna finish up these drawers. I'm gonna sand whatever needs to be sanded and I'm gonna touch up whatever needs to be touched up. And then we're gonna finish our project. Just remember, it doesn't matter how fast you paint or how slow you paint. What matters is how it looks in the end. So you really wanna take your time at the end to really make sure that everything looks on point. Our box is dry now and I have these IOD stamps. We are gonna condition them because these are brand new obviously and when you have new IOD stamps you want to take a little bit of fine sandpaper and lightly sand them so it grabs the paint. So I'm going to unwrap these, we'll go ahead and condition them and then we will stamp them on our box. All right, so let's get that out of the package here. Hmm, what one should we use? So I really like this one for sure we're going to use. I love that one too. That's a pretty one. Okay. Um, maybe that too. Okay, so we'll just get a few out and like I said, I'm going to condition them. They're always very hard to get off of the the plastic but don't worry you're not gonna rip them they're so strong pull them up the first time you get them out they're very hard to pull up oops sorry I hit the, the stand have this and I'm just going to take a little sandpaper and just kind of rough up the stamp here and that's how you condition them just with a little bit of fine sandpaper and you go over it so I'm just going to get a few more here and then we will stamp them Right, so we kind of have these where we want them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of tin foil and I'm gonna use some paint and I'm gonna just kind of like brush a thin layer of paint there and then we're gonna put our stamps right into this. I'm gonna use some of this Dixie Belle and it's called Fluff. So I'm just gonna brush a thin layer on this, this tin foil here. So basically, you're just gonna, it's like you're painting the tin foil. Just do a thin layer, you don't want it real thick or else you get too much globby paint. So we're gonna take our first one here and I'm gonna stick that in there. You know what, I need to do it just a little bit longer here. All right. So stick that right down into the paint and then you're just going to lightly press all right so that should be pretty good let's take a look see what we got Right, so that looks pretty. Hopefully it's gonna come out. Let's cross our fingers. I'm gonna press this down. All right, let's see what we have. Oh, that looks so pretty. Okay, so that's one. And we're just gonna continue to work our way down.
and we'll just do this last one here. Okay, that one probably could have came out a little better. I might redo that one. I have some numbers by Tim Holtz. Um, it's a stencil and I really like how these look and I'm gonna put them on the smaller drawers. I think that will look really cool. Oh, and just so you know, I redid that flower. I didn't like how it looked. And you know what? If you ever make a mistake, just know that it's just paint and you can paint over it just like I did. All right, so we are gonna use these here and I'm just gonna stencil on the drawers here. Again, we're gonna use the same paint that we did, Dixie Belle Fluff. You just wanna get a little paint on there and then offload a little of it so you don't have a big glob because that would not be good. All right, so should I do 01 and 02? I kind of like that. Maybe we should do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I kind of like that. Look how good that looks. Now comes the tricky part because we're gonna do O2 and they're far apart from each other. So I'm just gonna kind of line up the two to be close to the edge. And then I will go back in and do the zero. Lift that up. Perfect. Okay, and now we need a zero next to that. Great. Okay, now we'll move on and do the three. And then we're gonna put the zero right here next to it. I really love how this box is. It is so cool. All right, let's stage it. I can't tell you how much I love this. This project came out so good. On one hand, it has the natural elements of like botanicals, but on the other hand, it looks like those metal drawers that I buy everywhere, especially when I go to the flea market, you'll see them in my wagon. And I really think the combination of the two is a really good mix. All right, you guys, so I found this for $2.99 at the thrift store. Very cheap, very inexpensive. And this just adds a little pop of color to your booth. Now I found these flowers not too long ago too. I used them in a pot. And that looked really good, but you know what? We could use these in here too. So if you just add some flowers in there, It makes a nice arrangement and it's so cheap, like $2.99 plus these were $1.99. That's not very much money at all. And this can really 
just kind of make your booth kind of pop because you have a little happy green in there. Now, you know I'm not a big fan of a lot of color because I like to keep things classic. However, for spring, I don't mind a little green, you know, just to kind of give it a little pop of color. Here's a really good example. When we went to the vintage farmhouse, there was a booth there that had some of this type of green and it really made their booth more attractive, I thought. Do you see how your eye is just drawn to their booth? They have a lot of natural wood, but they also have this little pop of color that catches your eye. And look who's in this booth. See, I'm telling you, it works. Well, that's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. If you like this episode and you want to see more episodes, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Cherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.